Electric just released a brand new version 12 of their software, and this is one of the biggest updates they made in a long time. In this new update, they made a completely new redesign of their user interface. It looks much more modernized, and they added a bunch of new features. In this video, I'm going to show you one of their new features that are going to be a really big game changer for how you can make designs and carve them very quickly and you can even use AI to help you with this. If you're not familiar with what AI is, this is the artificial intelligence that you can use to create images for you of practically anything that you want to design. And all of this can be done for free with just three simple steps. So we're gonna get started and show you how that's done. And first off, I just wanna show you a quick overview of what we're doing. So this project example, I just made a text prompt that I wanted a polar bear that is a DJ. And you could see the image that was generated on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, I used one single toolpath and created this carving that you can easily carve with your CNC with a simple V-bit and no other tools necessary. And to do this, you will need V-carve or Aspire software. So make sure you have that first. And let's get started on a brand new project and show you how this is done. So starting from a brand new project, we're just gonna create a new file. You can make it any size that you want. I'm just gonna use 10 by 10 inches for this example. And you could zero wherever you like. I prefer to do a material surface for this type of carve. So I'm gonna click OK. And the very first thing we're gonna need is an image to use for our carving. And this could be any image that you have on your computer already. It could be an image you took a picture of or an image you created yourself. But in this example, I'm gonna show you how to use artificial intelligence to make practically any image that you'd like to create. To do this, we're gonna use a free tool from Microsoft, and that tool is called Microsoft Copilot. As you can see, here is the polar bear that I made in the earlier example. And all I did was say, polar bear DJ black and white clip art style. And this is the image it came up with. It actually came up with four different variants, and that was the one I liked the most. So that's the one I used. So this is the free tool we're gonna to use. There are other tools out there that you can use, but I know this one is easy and free to use. So if you wanna try it out, just go to copilot.microsoft.com and you could sign up for a free Microsoft account. You may even have a Microsoft account from something else. Once you log in, you're gonna to go to the designer tab and then at the bottom, you're gonna type in exactly what you want. And I do recommend asking it for black and white clip art style because that will give you the easiest to use image for creating the tool pass. And I'm just gonna make up an example for this, something crazy. Let's say we wanted a parachuting elephant. So we're gonna type in parachuting elephant, black and white clip art style. And after you type in exactly what you want, of course, the more detail you give here, the better. But I do recommend adding that black and white clip art style at the end just to make it a little bit easier for Vetric software to create the toolpaths for. But once you're done, you're gonna click enter and you're gonna see it's gonna take a minute to respond, but once it responds, it'll give you four images that it generates from that prompt. And these are gonna be the images you can use inside of Vetric. All right, and here you can see, it just took a few seconds and it created four different images from that prompt we generated. So now we can either select one of these that we like the most, or down here you can see they even have recommendations if you wanna add or change anything about the image, you could type something else and it'll give you different results. You can also click on an image and edit the image individually. You can change the styling and you can also click on parts that you want to change. But let's just use this one as an example. So what you're gonna do from here, once you're happy with it, you're gonna click on these three dots. You're gonna click download, and that's gonna download to your computer. And then you're gonna go back to your Vetric software, go to the import bitmap or vector button, and you're gonna select the image we just created and open that. And now you can see we have that black and white image inside of Vetric. Now in the older versions of Vetric, version 11.5 and below, you would have to bitmap trace this, clean up the vectors, and do a lot of editing work to be able to create a toolpath for this. And generally you'd use like the V-carving toolpath for something like this. Well, now you don't have to do all that extra work anymore because of the new toolpath in version 12. So if we go over to the toolpath tab, this will be our next step is adding the sketch carve toolpath, which is a brand new toolpath in version 12. 
So to do that, like I said, you need vCarve or Aspire. And you're going to see this toolpath here. It's called Sketch Carving. Looks like a little pencil on there. So you're going to click on that toolpath and make sure it's in the bitmap mode and make sure your image is selected. And then you could set flat depths and start depths if you need to, but you can leave these at zero and it will carve right into the surface, no problem. You can change the tool if you like. I recommend using a V-bit, like a 60 degree for more detail or a 90 degree for less detail. And then down at the bottom, they have machining limit boundaries. I would recommend generally picking the bitmap boundary for something like this, but you could also isolate it into selected vectors as well. And the main thing you want to look at here is the tracing parameters. So you can see it says line thickness and it has a number here and a slider. So the higher you make this, the thicker your lines are going to carve and the deeper it's going to carve. And then the lower you make it, the smaller and shallower it will carve, but you'll also be able to get more detail. So you can adjust this left or right and take a look at it in the 2D view and you're going to notice it changes based off of where you change the slider. So as I'm moving this down, it's capturing more of the detail and making the lines smaller. If I turn it up, you'll see it'll carve deeper and carving more of the areas. The higher you make this, you may have to add a flat depth at some point because it's going to want to cut very deep in these dark green areas. And if you make it lower, you don't have to add a start depth as much because it won't be cutting as deep. So you can decide where you want to place this and don't worry if you don't like it the first time, you can go back and edit it. So I'm going to try it here at around 30 for the line thickness. This also will depend on how big your image is, so keep that in mind. But once we're happy with what it looks like, you're going to click Calculate, and that will generate a toolpath for you without needing any vector lines. So that's going right off the image and creating a v-carving toolpath for this. And this is called the sketch carving. Now we're going to go into the preview and click Preview Toolpath. And you can see there is the preview toolpath. And I recommend going up to machine area color and turning on global fill, switching it to black. That'll give you a really good indication what it would look like if you were to paint that. And as you can see, we went from just a simple text prompt that we made. We generated the AI image, imported the image, and then created that sketch carving to make a really quick sign. And then of course you can add or subtract anything to this. You can add text, you could subtract part of it. If you want to isolate just one part of it, you can draw a vector around just the elephant and change the sketch carving parameters to just carve inside of that vector. So there's many things you can do with this. And like I said, if you don't like the way it turned out, you can always double click on that toolpath, change the line thickness or any of the other settings. Let's turn it up to 50, click calculate, and that will now generate a different toolpath based on those new parameters. And then you always want to do reset preview and then preview it again. And that will show you the new design with the different line thickness or whatever else you changed. So as you can see, this one added more of that fuzziness in some of the areas. I don't like this one as much. So if I wanted to, I can just go back and edit that to turn it back down to where I liked it before. Now, one other tip I would keep in mind here is to go up to the toolpaths, go down to preview simulation quality and make sure this is turned up because if it's at the standard quality, it might preview a little blurry. So if you turn it up higher, it will get a better preview of what it's actually going to carve as. It may just make your computer a little bit slower as it's previewing it. And like I said, that's just one use case for this specific example. I'm going to show you some other examples from one of my students in my online CNC community. This is from my student named David. You can see he made some AI generated images and he used the carving toolpath to make some really nice detailed designs. So as you can see, it doesn't have to be just clip art style images. You can make plaques or anything you can think of. You can make some really neat designs and really detailed depending on how detailed you make your prompts in AI, or you can just go online and find some images to use for your sketch carving as well. Just make sure you are able to use those images if you find someone else's, or if you're trying to sell projects, make sure you have the rights to do that. 
And by the way, this is part of my community here. If you are interested in learning more about Vetric, especially with all the new software updates, we have a large active community of CNC users and we all use Vetric software and always are active every week on this community. We do weekly Q&A calls, weekly project lessons, and you can see some of the lessons here. We just did some recent lessons on how to make 3D objects with AI and cut them out on your CNC. And as well as what we just looked at here, how to make 2D graphics with AI and cut them out as well as many more projects. You can see we already have 186 project lessons in this community with more every week. And this will allow you to find any projects you wanna work on and you'll be able to cut them out right away going off of the video lessons that we do and the project files that are all available for each project. And then if you ever get stuck on something, like I said, we do weekly Q&A calls. So what we do with that is you post your questions in our community and then each week I go live two times per week answering all the questions and then you guys get your answers right away. So it's a really active community getting all your questions answered. We also do project challenges every month. So if you wanna check that out, we have lots of great prizes and it's just a really fun community to be a part of. So like I said, we go live three times a week Two of them are Q&A calls. One of them is a project lesson each week. So if you guys are interested in joining this community, check out the link down in the description. And other than that, that is the lesson for this new sketch carving feature in version 12. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, make sure you comment below and let me know what you think.